Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. The shirt is back once again. This is the top 15 best movies of 2021. And of course, standard two disclaimers. First of all, I didn't see every single movie in the year. I like to think I saw like the big ones. And of course, this is not the factual list, ladies and gentlemen. This is my useless nerd opinion. If you agree or disagree, or if you're gonna be a truly awesome nerd, share your list. Top 10, five, or just say, what is your best movie of the year? Let me know down below. And before we start off with the list, I wanna give a few quick honorable mentions. Blood Red Sky, The Harder They Fall, Malignant, Candyman, and Old. All five of those movies I really did enjoy. They just didn't quite make the list, but they're definitely good movies in the year. And let's start off the list with coming in number 15, Dune. This is the movie I'm probably gonna think would be in like a top five of a lot of people's lists. Just I've never been like the biggest Dune fan, and if I'm being totally honest, where I gave the movie a very, very high score, I do think it really needs that second movie. It does not feel like a first chapter. It just cuts way too abruptly, and a lot of people compare it to like Fellowship of the Ring, where I think they're not the same, bro. Like Fellowship has a beginning, middle, and end. This felt like a beginning and half a middle. We really need the second film. Part one is still really sick. Coming in number 14, Ghostbusters Afterlife. All I needed this movie to be is better than that last one. That was an absolute tragedy of a movie, mate. But this was really, really good, man. This is how you do nostalgia right. Unlike things like Matrix, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Those things take nostalgia and take a diarrhea dump on it. But this is how you do it right. Emotional story, bro. Your boy started tearing up twice. Any movie that can do it, that is a big deal for me. I really enjoyed this movie. And I know lifelong Ghostbusters fans are very happy with this film. Coming in number 13, A Quiet Place, part two. That first movie is one of the scariest like ideas ever. The fact that you cannot make a single bit of noise and these awful looking creatures, they're gonna murder you quick time. I never thought they could do a part two. It felt like, I don't wanna say flawless, but it was a near perfect movie. That first one, it's like an eight, maybe a nine out of 10. I need to rewatch it, but they pulled it off with the second one. I'm pretty actually happy to see a trilogy now. So if it gets made, that'd be pretty dope. I love the cast, great story. Again, the creatures are very, very scary and they pulled off a sequel to something I didn't think was possible. Coming in number 12, Fear Street. This is technically three movies, but I'm just putting them together because you can watch all of them on Netflix. They link perfectly. It's a horror movie taking place at different like time zones and they connect with the same cast, kind of a bit like American Horror Story. Man, I loved it. I love the cast. I love the overall story. I did not get the twists and turns. Easily like some of the best horror movies of this year. I really, really appreciate it. It's got like Stranger Things, Halloween, It, all those kind of vibes, but it has its own thing that doesn't ever feel like it's copying. Fear Street, if you like horror, check it out right now. Coming in number 11, Free Guy. I didn't think it was possible to make a movie about an NPC in a video game getting like intelligence and doing his own thing inside the game. Whoa, I was blown away. I really enjoyed this movie. Ryan Reynolds killed it. It has like sprinkled bits of amazingness in here. I can't say what it is. If you've seen it, you know. It just there's a lot of things that surprise me in this movie. I like the world they've built and I kind of look at NPCs in a different light now. Imagine they were real and we just go around slapping them. I do believe this is actually available on Disney Plus right now and I know a lot of people still haven't seen it. One of the best movies in the year and definitely one of the best video game movies ever made. Coming in number 10, The Tomorrow War. This is on Amazon Prime. It stars Chris Pratt. What a sick movie. This has everything. Sci-fi, time travel, horror, post-apocalyptic world and a good story. Yo, this has everything. I really, really loved the time travel, man. That, that is a make or break for any movie. They do it really good here. They set great boundaries that you know the movie just can't give you some cheap bull crap. The monsters are very, very scary and the post-apocalyptic world looks great. Awesome cast. This movie, extremely underrated. I know a lot of people still haven't seen it. I'm gonna be fair, man. I, I saw this and I knew instantly it'd be on the top 15 list. I didn't know where and it's coming at number 10. It's pretty sick. Coming in number nine, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This is how you do an origin story with a compelling villain. His dad is just an absolute menace, mate. Not the fact you got 
top-notch CGI. Of course, the story's great. Very, very funny. The action, this is like very Chinese martial arts inspired. All the fighting looks great. And that final act, full on fantasy, insane madness on screen. I did not see it going so crazy. There's a lot in this movie, y'all. Cannot wait to see Shang-Chi in future phases of Marvel and future films. He is sick. Coming in number eight, The Conjuring 3. I am a humongous sucker for the Conjuring films and the Conjuring universe. Those three, and like two of the Annabelle movies, they're actually some of my favourite movies of all time, y'all. The third one did not disappoint. It definitely feels the most different from any of the Conjuring movies, but again, amazing cast, amazing story. I'd say it's not as like creepy as the other two movies on the list, but this is like, it's creepy in another way. Again, all these things are like real things that have happened. Kind of crazy that this has happened. I don't know if they're making a fourth, but yo, I'm ready. Coming in number seven, Godzilla vs Kong. I've seen this five times this year, straight up. The action between Godzilla and Kong and the end scene, I'm not gonna spoil it, don't worry. The action and fighting is so top notch, like some of the best I've ever seen in any movie. The CGI, the graphics, there's different like camera angles. I remember there's bits where like Kong is throwing Godzilla's face through buildings, but it's like a GoPro angle. It's properly sick. I thought the first Godzilla was very, very good. I loved the second movie and I love this movie. Coming in number six, Army of the Dead. This is the zombie movie I was waiting for, man, directed by the legend Zack Snyder on Netflix. Dawn of the Dead, the Zack Snyder one, is actually my favourite zombie movie of all time. And now we have Army of the Dead. Yeah, 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 come on, man. This blew me away. I love seeing the different types of zombies because they're very, very different in this movie. I'm not going to spoil it again if you haven't seen it. You probably have. It's been out for a while now. But if you like zombies and horror and you still ain't seen it, what are you doing? I really like the story and I love the world. I love that it's self-contained in Vegas. It's just everything I want in like a post-apocalyptic zombie thing is in this movie. Coming at number five, Halloween Kills. The Halloween series, I am a proper fanboy. I do not care. The first movie, the goated one, is goated for a reason. Now we have 2018 one, goated as well for me personally. This is definitely a drop off, but it's a well sick sequel, man. So many flashback scenes in here just work so well and it is so gory. My guy kills people left, right and centre and he does not stop. That is what I wanted to see and apparently, hopefully, please. It's still on schedule for next year, Halloween 2022. We're going to get Halloween ends and four bangers of a movie, man. If they nail the landing, I'm going to be in heaven, mate. Coming in number four, The Suicide Squad. I absolutely hate that first Suicide Squad movie. It's probably one of the worst. In fact, no, it is the worst. The worst DC movie ever made, mate, in the DCEU anyways. This was so sick, man. This feels like James Gunn grabbed someone at Warner Brothers and said, no, you listen to me, boy. You let me do whatever I want. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, cool, man. Just do whatever you want. R rating, amazing story, sick cast, sick action. I've seen it a ton of times. Just like Godzilla and Kong, I wanted to keep re-watching it to see like, is it really that good? I gave it a well high score. From start to finish, I'm fully engaged. I really hope we get a Suicide Squad part two with some of these same actors. That'd be amazing. This shows you, man. James Gunn is an OG. He knows how to make group movies. Obviously, Guardians of the Galaxy smashed it. Man, this movie was sick. Coming in number three, No Time to Die. The final Daniel Craig, James Bond movie. And what a way to end. DC is my personal James Bond. I grew up not really liking it until Casino Royale came out. And then Skyfall, Spectre, I think it's still extremely highly underrated. Quantum of Solace, don't really want to talk about it. And I needed the ending to go out with an absolute bang. And what a twist. The villain's good. Action amazing. Extremely emotional. I didn't think I'd feel so much in a Bond movie. But this shows you, man, Daniel Craig is goated as James Bond. I hope the next James Bond is at least as good as DC, man, because what he done for, like, my generation of Bond fans, we genuinely love seeing him as James Bond on the big screen, and this movie went out with a bang. Coming in number two, Justice League. This movie goes to show you, if you keep talking, bro, and enough people start saying it, anything is possible, genuinely. I can't believe this movie still exists. Four hours, bro, of an amazing Zack Snyder's 
movie and proper vision. I have seen this, I think like eight times this year. Four hours and I don't skip nothing, mate. I love this movie. Some of my favorite characters of all time in here. I love Superman so much and he is goated in this movie. Zack Snyder, hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Big up yourself and now, yo man, you know the next one. Continue the Snyderverse, bro. We need it. Man, this movie's amazing. If I'm being honest, if my number one pick didn't come out this year, this would be number one. Easily by far the best DCEU movie of all time. And coming in number one, Spider-Man No Way Home. The hype for this was unstoppable and I don't know how it exceeded it, bro. Unbelievable. The story, the villains, the characters, the heroes, Doctor Strange, the fighting, the CGI, the emotions, bro. I cried bare times, man. This movie had everything. And a few weeks ago, at the time of this recording, actually, I made my MCU list, worst to best. It's well close up there, man. I ain't gonna tell you where. Could be one. Could be two. If you wanna see that, I'll leave it in the description. I'll also leave my top 15 best TV shows down there as well, but sticking with Spider-Man, what an amazing movie, man. I've already seen people, like, comparing the Spider-Man trilogy to the Captain America trilogy. I think that is a bit of a stretch. I think the Cap trilogy is probably still the best in the MCU, but this movie, like Justice League, I gave it 10 nerds out of 10. It's staying it, bro. I've seen it twice now, just to make sure if the hype, like, was too much. Now, nah, mate, for me, it's a 10. This movie's goaded and the best movie of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my picks for the top 15 best movies of 2021. Did you agree or do you think I'm talking BS, mate? Or if you want to share your list, let me know down below. I'm about to actually film the worst movies of the year. That depression video will come out tomorrow, New Year's Eve, and I'll see you there.